Hi, I'm Michelle Neal and welcome to The Theatre Show, your window into Australian community and musical theatre. In theatre news this week, New South Wales Premier Christina Keneally unveiled Sydney's first theatre walk in honour of our stage and screen legends. In her dedication speech, Premier Keneally said, this landmark promenade is a permanent reminder of the immense contribution that our famous stage actors, producers, directors and designers have made to our national identity. Those honoured on the walk include John Bell, Barry Otto, Neil Armfield, Reg Livermore, Jim Sharman and Brian Thompson. The annual cabaret showcase is on again. Now in its eighth year, this year's showcase will be the biggest yet. The annual competition is the chance for aspiring cabaret and musical theatre performers to showcase their talent in front of an audience and before judges that include Australia's leading entertainment industry identities while competing for a huge host of prizes. This year's winner will get the chance to perform their original show at the 2011 Adelaide, Brisbane and Melbourne Cabaret Festivals plus much more. This year's competition is open to people in all stages of their career so why not have a go? Details are on our website. And that's the news. Later in the spotlight, I will be talking to Sean O'Riordan, the director of a small family business. But now, Mudge with the guide. And now, here is the guide, opening in Sydney in January. The Adventure of Paddington Bear by Alfred Bradley and Michael Bond at the Genesian Theatre. The show runs from the 8th through to the 30th of January. Hyperspace, the Star Wars musical by Peter Novakovich at the Town Hall Theatre in Campbelltown. Only on the 28th and the 29th of January. Opening in Brisbane in January, we have Journey's End by R.C. Sheriff at the Mount Cotton Drama Group. Opening in Melbourne in November, Cozzy by Louis Nara at the Peridor Theatre. For more information, visit showline.com.au. Welcome back to The Theatre Show. In the spotlight today is the Darlow Drama Studio show A Small Family Business by Alan Eggborn. What happens when a businessman finds out that his own family and this family business are up to no good? Siphoning off money and selling off goods to enrich themselves, how does he make things right? And how does he keep his family together under the threat of a malicious, undercover private detective who is putting pressure on them to pay up or he'll spill the beans? I was at the Darlinghurst Theatre talking to the director about the show. Let's take a look. A small family business is often, often staged on two levels or in multiple rooms. How did you meet the challenge of staging this play in an intimate venue like Darlow Drama? Well, we needed to um, obviously condense it down and we only had really one level. So what I needed to do was to figure how many spaces I actually needed um, on, a, on a flat surface. And I realized that I could put seven, eight different rooms into three spaces, a hall, a kitchen, and a lounge. And we just, with lights, either opened up the hall or the lounge, or hall and lounge, and switched between just using lights, and it's worked really well. Yeah. Fantastic. What do you hope the audience take away from their experience today? Look, I, I think that the actual, the moral, of this play, um, a small family business, is that um, life is not black and white. Um, there's an element of um, of crime, corruption that's gone on with, on, in, on in this small family business, and and Jack, who's the main character, has to decide whether he's going to cover that up or whether he's going to um, tell the police and let it rip. And he basically has to face the dilemma that we all have to face, which is, um, do we actually compromise in life? Do we actually work out whether um, we have to bend a little bit more rather than just uh, um, live to a set of morals that no one else can live to? Everybody bends the rules. Everybody but us. Jack, you'd rather Sammy went to court than give the man what he wanted? No, I just refused to give in to practice and black man. Dad, we're talking about Sammy's future. To hell with Sammy. Ah! Masses and masses and masses of money. What have you done? Nothing. Have you stolen no, it? No, of course I haven't stolen it. Okay, I know. Sorry, I don't know why I even said that. Just to pay that man off. Here's to Ken. To Ken. Here's to us. To, to us. us. And here's to the family business. The family, family business. business.
This is a really funny, intriguing, and fast paced comedy from the master of the English farce. A small family business is open for seven days only from the 5th to the 12th of December at the Darlinghurst Theatre. Tickets are available from our website. Yeah, yeah, come and watch me, Wilco, you big good, you big good. Come on, Wilco, Wilco. Reviewers and audiences alike are being moved and entertained by Angela's Kitchen. The central character is, of course, Angela, and Paul brings her to life in An Ode to a Woman He Loved Very Much. It is the performer opening the door to his past and inviting all of us in. Stage Whisper sums it up by saying, Delightful evenings like Angela's Kitchen are a reminder of just how powerful, engaging, and charming theater at its simplest storytelling levels can be. Angela's Kitchen is on at the Griffith Theater, three Wednesday matinees, 12 p.m., on the 24th November, the 1st and 8th of December. Again, ticketing details are on our website. After the break, Olivier will share some theater tips and tricks in our regular theater craft segment. And we have some great tickets to give away, so don't you go anywhere. Hello, welcome to Theatre Craft. Today we'll share with you some tips and tricks for your next theatre production. The trick of the day is how to make fake blood look like true blood. You will need a few things to start with. A bowl, some mixing spoons, a half cup of warm water, a tablespoon of cocoa powder, three to four tablespoons of golden syrup, and a teaspoon of red food colouring. Now let's get started. Mix the cocoa powder with the warm water in the mixing bowl. So here we go. Mix and let's mix the two and until they dissolve one into the other. It smells good actually. The next step is adding the, good, the red food color with the golden syrup. The quantity of red food color and golden syrup really depends on the consistency and color you want from the, from, from the fake blood. Adding more golden syrup will make it stickier and take longer to dry. Now let's combine the ingredients. As we said, one tablespoon of red food color, it's a bit more, so the blood will be a bit more red. Let's get the golden syrup into the mix, and there we are, and this will be a very sticky blood. Again, mix the whole lot. Obviously, adding the golden syrup makes everything a bit thicker. Make sure that all the bubbles that can be sitting on top of the mixture are gone. Let it sit for a bit of time, but we're good right now. And here we are with some fake blood, which tastes good. Back to you, much. Thank you, Olivier. Tasty blood. Hmm. Moving on. The theater show is giving away tickets to Hairspray to the first 20 people who can correctly answer this question. Who was our quote by this week? Hit our website now for your chance to win. Well, that's all, folks. That's all from the theater show this week. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.